Would you like to share with our audience um, your your perspective on the homeless community? Who are they? Well, the the biggest myth out there is that they're a bunch of drunk or mentally ill people. It's addicts um, and those type of individuals, mm. which in fact is not the case. <laughs> We're so glad you're able to join us to share your story. I'm glad to be here today. That's awesome. Well, Lee, I heard that you have um, basically dedicated 30 plus years in serving the homeless. Can you share with us what what you do um, in serving the homeless? Well, I've done various things over the years. I've worked at soup kitchens, homeless shelters, Mm -hmm. I've helped people get off the streets and into their first homes. Um, I've worked with community development. I've done various committee works, um, trying to get people into various jobs. Um, I've worked with programs to help young people understand finances, Mm -hmm. um, understand where they need to go with their careers so they won't end up um, being in poverty. Um, so I've kind of done it all, been there, done that, got that t-shirt kind of a thing. Yes. Well, 30 years, you had a lot of time to, um, I guess, follow through the whole spectrum, uh, of possibilities for, for this community. What do you think, um, I, I think we, there's always stigma or misconceptions about the homeless population. Can you share with us, because you've probably seen all types that comes from all sorts of situations. Would you like to share with our audience um, your your perspective on the homeless community? Who are they? Well, the, the biggest myth out there is that they're a bunch of drunk or mentally ill people. It's addicts um, and those type of individuals, Mm. which in fact is not the case. Um, Yes, I'm not denying that some homeless people are addicts or mentally ill. I'm not saying that's not the case, Mm -hmm. but that's not typically a driving factor in what pushes people into homelessness. There are a lot of single mothers Mm. um, who are sleeping in cars or hotels. Um, a, a lot of times because of domestic violence situations. Mm. Um, I've even met a doctor once who was out on the streets, a doctor, literally, because he had so much debt from going to medical school. Oh and my goodness. he just, he couldn't afford an apartment and pay for his debts. So it could be literally anyone. I've seen people with medical bills mm. that, you know, they had a heart attack and their insurance covered half of it. And then they ended up evicted from their apartment because they couldn't afford everything anymore. So I often say, you never know. It could be you next week. Literally, it could be you next week. And right now with inflation, this is more true than ever. Yes, yes, and times are tough. And um, I think your message, it it could be any one of us. That's strong. Well, you know, I also, you know, see that they're sleeping under the bridge or they're, um, I, they call it what, panhandling on the streets. And I hear people say, why don't they just go to the shelter? Why don't they go um, to the places, I guess, offering services? Why don't they? Well, a lot of them feel that there's stigma and shame attached to it and they won't reach out for help. Mm-hmm. Um, however, part of that is because people aren't willing to go where they are and talk to them and meet them and, and sit down and have a conversation with them. And if, and if you go to where they're at Mm -hmm. and have a conversation, Mm -hmm. then they are much more likely to come in and get help. But you have to be willing to go to them and not expect them to come to you. Because there are a various, various reasons why they've ended up in the street in the first place. 
And then there's a lot of shame attached to whatever that reason is. And then they don't know how. We talk about what's called the slow slide into homelessness, Mm. where one little inciting thing becomes another thing, becomes another thing, and then they spiral. And somewhere along the spiral, they don't know how to stop the spiral, and then they end up at the bottom. And then they don't know how to get out. Yes. And they, and again, this this goes into a lot of shame. Mm. And yeah. And once they're in the bottom, this is where a lot of times addiction comes in. Mm -hmm. Where I said that isn't the driving factor that put them on the streets, but it becomes a driving factor once they're on the streets. And yeah, which compounds the problem and so then they don't know who to reach out to Mm. they're ashamed to reach out because then they hit rock bottom and now they're drinking or doing drugs and then it's just this whole can of worms it's a vicious cycle yeah it's a vicious vicious cycle and i've seen this i've seen this i don't know how many times Mm. but but you know jesus went out Mm. to the masses he did not expect them to come to him. Amen. He went. Mm-hmm. He went. He went. Repeatedly. Mm-hmm. He did not sit in the synagogue at all mm-hmm. and preach. That's Is true. there an incident even once in the Bible of Jesus talking to people in the synagogue other than tipping over the tables? Is That's there? Right. right. Except for, well, no, there is, I, I take that back. There is him when he was a child yelling at the, yelling at the <laughs> rabbi, right? But yeah, mm-hmm. okay. But again, he went to the masses. He fed them mm-hmm. and then he talked to them, right? Mm-hmm. This is what we're supposed to be doing. And it's not just the homeless, it's everyone. This is what we're supposed to be doing. We need to go where they are. Mm-hmm. We need to have a conversation mm-hmm. and figure out what their problem is, what their issue is, and how best to help them. I think taking that first step to go to them um, will be the hardest one. Um, what was it like for you for you when you, I guess you know that, that probably w- would have been years ago when you stepped out to talk to them even as a woman um you know there's always concern about safety and things like that it's how how would you um, encourage those who might have concerns well i would say don't go alone Mm -hmm. number one rule never go by yourself um you know find a find a group who is willing to go with you Mm -hmm. and just sit in a park or uh, you know in under a bridge where they're at and bring water, bring snacks, bring sandwiches and have a conversation and just don't try to push anything. Just figure out where they are. And, and there are, there are groups out there that are, that do this on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Um, I know there's a group in my local town that does this. Um, They're, they, they do street feeds and, they go where people are and provide food and and then they start the conversation and and just and you then know, guide not them willing, to the resources right yes i see yeah and so you know find a group like that in your own community mm-hmm. and if there isn't one find a way to start one that's because because there's got to be people out there who are willing to do the work mm-hmm. if if you just just say hey we need to do this in our town. Mm-hmm. So first to educate yourself about the stigma and if you have any biases to, to educate yourself and hopefully others. And I think you being on the show and trying to uh, shed a light is going to be helpful. Um, and then take action and meet them where they're at is, is what I'm hearing say. Yeah, because again, um, there's a lot of studies out there that say that once people are in homelessness, Mm -hmm. they don't reach out at all. They don't. And, you know, people literally starve to death, freeze to death every year that are homeless Mm -hmm. because they don't reach out. And and that's a shame. And it shouldn't be happening in America, but it does. So, and then, and then, like I say, you see situations in, 
in Texas, in Los Angeles, in New York, mm -hmm. where there's this Oregon, where there's huge, huge tent cities. And there's a, there's a variety of reasons for these issues at this point. But a lot of it is because people are screaming about the problem, not trying to fix the problem. Yes. Just complaining is not going to solve it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you've been at this for 30 plus years. There's, there's obviously, in the way you speak about it even today, is still full of passion. Um, so what inspired you to start working with the homeless? Really, it was the way I was raised. Um, I'm adopted, and so my parents were just these loving, giving people mm -hmm. because they just gave uh, my brother and my sister and I a oh, home. And sweet. so for my parents, giving was everything. Mm -hmm. um, and so to me, it just seemed normal to give everything you have to others. Um, and what a great role my, model. My parents, yeah. My parents are just beautiful, amazing people, mm -hmm. and I just saw that lived out every day mm -hmm. because of them. And so a, a lot of people are like, you have such a giving heart, and I'm like, because that's what I saw modeled. Wow, that, that's, a, that's something for us as parents um, to be mindful, because kids are watching. They're watching yeah. what we do and what we believe in, what we hold true. Um, and that certainly is such an amazing story that your parents not only adopted, I guess, all, all the siblings you have? Yes, I have. All of us were adopted and we were all chosen. Mm -hmm. And that is a very different relationship mm -hmm. than when you have children. Yes. Um, you know, it, uh, it's a very special relationship because my parents made it very clear they picked us mm -hmm. we were wanted mm -hmm. beyond anything um and each of us was special because of that and it um it, it's hard to describe exactly the relationship we had because of that it's it's a very different relationship yeah yeah I, and i have a very special relationship with my son mm -hmm. um but i gave birth to him mm -hmm. so it, it's a different relationship and and I've seen it, you know, I, I love my son dearly. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's a different relationship. It's a different connection. It's a different bond. Sure. It's, it's born out of different circumstances. And I, I love that you say I was chosen. I was chosen to, to be in their family. And that feels special. They could have picked anyone, but they picked me. Yep. Oh, that's, that's what, that's special. Well, see, that's why you have, you have such a um, multifaceted story of just being adopted, um, not just being adopted, but being adopted in a family that, that just sounded like love you and your siblings deeply. And not only that, they loved everyone else deeply in, in, in such way that they're serving them. And then you... Yeah because of your mindset of servant service and you, how did you encounter the homeless as a way where you want to dedicate, I guess, a good part of your life in helping them? Yeah, it, it just, it just kind of came naturally to me. Um, as I grew older, I just saw so much need and this just seemed to click to me and that just, there were so many people out there in need mm -hmm. and as a single woman, I knew I couldn't adopt a child back in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, you can now, but back then you couldn't. So this just seemed natural to me that there was just, I could do this. I, I could just jump in here. This was a way I could help others. And, and I, I never looked back. I just never really even thought that, mm -hmm. you know, there was something better I could do with my life, I guess. I, it just, yeah. That's, that's fantastic. So 30 years later, you, you know, you are um, a warrior in, in the homeless because anyone who can do something, you know, consistently for 30 years for a particular cause um, is, is already a, an accomplishment in, in my opinion, right? But now you have a whole, you have a whole nother, um, uh, I guess, role or title. You are a published author and you, um, in, in, in your background, you were, 
we're currently seeing um, one or two books, but you have a four book series. I like to know, or if you can share with our audience, how did you get into writing? Because um, it's it doesn't seem like something um, that just go alongside of you know serving the homeless at the park or the soup kitchen and, and things like that. How did this happen? Uh, it was an accident. <laughs> Isn't all good things that sometimes come through accidents? Nothing's planned like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there I was for a lot of years doing all of this various work. And um, I was at this this community meeting one night, mm -hmm. which was normal for me. I went to a lot of committees and community meetings. Sure. and But I was at this particular meeting and the topic was really interesting to me and I had something to say, but the guy just ignored me. He mm. was paying attention to the politician in the room, the businessman in the room, mm. all of these other people in the room. And I was getting really frustrated because I'd been working on this committee for years. I'd been doing this work for years and all of these people were just kind of there. Right. And a lot of them even more than one or two of these meetings, right? And I was just really getting frustrated. So at the end of the meeting, I approached the person who was running the meeting to try to speak to him privately. And he he just gave me a bunch of excuses why he didn't want to hear what I had to say. Mm. I was just a woman. I was just a single mom. I had just been a volunteer. I just whatever. He just listed a bunch of reasons. And and I just left that meeting just feeling like I was invisible. I was a nobody. I wasn't important. And it would have taken him less time to listen to me than his excuses. And I was just so frustrated. I bet. And I went home. Yeah, I bet. That's very frustrating. Yeah. And mm. I realized that this was kind of normal. A lot of people did this to me. And so I went home and I started journaling mm. out my frustrations. And I did this night after night after night, just putting pen to paper. And I just, I just, cause I just hit a point, mm -hmm. you know, I was a middle-aged cranky woman <laughs> and I just hit this point. I'm like, I'm done. I'm done being ignored. Right. And I realized after several months that at some point what I was writing had flipped from being about me to being the pr first person perspective of a homeless woman. And accidentally written a novel well okay now what do i do so oh, hold I, on so you were writing <laughs> venting frustration which is very good thing to do versus acting out so so you were journaling and you were journaling it, it about yourself and then you flip characters wow yep totally flipped characters had no idea when i did that or why i did it but somewhere along the way that's what i did so, so you end up with a body of work that has started with you, and then you move to a, a homeless character. Homeless character. Okay. Yep. And then what happened after that? So I found a writers group, and I took it to them, mm -hmm. cleaned it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Took it to an editor, cleaned it up a little bit more. Still pretty hot mess because, <laughs> well, yeah, I had no training in anything, right? Part of my problem, no education, we're all good, never mind. <laughs> so it's like, okay, I'll throw it out to the universe. Uh, it's not great, I understand this. We'll sell a few copies, maybe change some hearts and minds, mm -hmm. raise some money for charity, we're good, a copy. So here's the trick, mm -hmm. I publish it, and I went from being ignored to being an expert literally overnight oh yes once you publish you are you're it yeah and so all of a sudden you're being asked to speak and home on homelessness issues i yeah just like wait what <laughs> <laughs> so you so people saw your publishing and you've been invited to was it conferences or is yeah, conferences, at churches, at various places. Mm. And it was just like, I don't understand. Why Why would you pay attention to me all of a sudden, right? Yeah, it was just, um, so I was like, okay, we'll just gotta ride this wave for as long as it lasts, right? I figured six months down the road, no. 
Well, a year in, I've sold more than 100,000 copies. I'm wow. like, okay. Wow. This is a thing. Mm -hmm. So I see that you now have a series. So tell us about this. And I, I really like the word, uh, the, the series title, Broken Road. Um, it just speaks so much with two words in, 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 you know, just from my perspective of besides talking about the homeless, you know, even our personal roads, as you're talking, you, you, you're, you're being ignored and you're not being recognized and your road forward um, as a community leader in this area was seem a little bit broken because you're not even being recognized. So it seems like it's a road for every everyone could be on this broken road and not just the homelessness right so but tell us about your your four four books um your series what are what right. is the each book um cover right so each book um is i call the, the series broken roads because each life is a broken road mm -hmm. that only christ can fix Oh my. And so each book has a different character that's on a physical, spiritual, and emotional journey. Mm. So, um, so Road Home, again, is about a homeless woman who shares her story and discovers home just isn't what she thought it was. Mm -hmm. uh, Road to Freedom is about a man who's dying of cancer, mm -hmm. and he's an immigrant, and he's just lived everywhere. Mm. And before he dies, he want to kind of he kind of wants to fix all his mistakes and things kind of go wrong there. And then finding the real road is about a woman who just has this horrible marriage and mm -hmm. she finally divorces the guy and discovers she was just doing all the wrong things for all the wrong reasons her entire life. Mm -hmm. And then my newest one, The Road West, is about an elderly woman who, when she was younger, she almost had an affair mm -hmm. and now she's discovering that she's old that mm. that little mistake caused guilt not only in her own life but it had a whole bunch of ripple effects in mm. other lives as well wow well i think the the ideas just keep flowing so now that you are a published author um and you're selling on amazon and your, your first book sold a hundred hundred thousand copies plus how, how has that impact you personally? Well, I, I've totally changed. I used to be this mousy little person in the corner. <laughs> and I'm not anymore. I, I'm i out there. Um, I, I am on podcasts and occasionally the radio. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I travel all the time, partially to research for my books. Mm -hmm. And I'm just living my best life. And I'm having more fun than I ever thought. And the best thing, though, is I have this huge platform mm -hmm. and I get to tell people my viewpoint mm -hmm. and I get to inspire others. And I'm just loving that because, yeah, OK, I don't care if you end up writing a book, but figure out what your passion is mm -hmm. and where you can use your heart, your mind, your mm -hmm. soul and go for it because Everyone has something to give. And for so long, I think I didn't realize how much I had to give. And I have so much more than I ever thought I did. And I'm just having so much fun. Just, just, the world is so big and I'm just loving it. And a lot of people are like, wait, you're over 50. And I'm like, who cares? <laughs> That's right. Who cares? Age is just a number. I feel like you're, you're, you're feeling, um, like you're you're stepping out of a box yourself. Maybe maybe not so much um, the gentleman at the cl the community meeting may have put you in. Sometimes we put ourselves in a box, thinking this is all I could do. And I think you were given a blessing of of this new platform, and you're really seeing seeing all that is still still within you to to continue to to give. What's next? Um, I have a fifth novel that will hopefully be coming out mm -hmm. later this year mm -hmm. uh, and I'm super excited it's a brand new series mm -hmm. and yeah it's it's going to be really personal to me um, it is on adoption so oh, yeah wow. super excited so great so you're you're now branching to another topic very near and dear to your heart 
And there's there are so many I personally know so many adoption adoptive families. Um, and oh wow, I can't wait to to share that with the group. Maybe you can come on our pack podcast next time to talk about just the adoption by itself. Um, very interesting. Because yeah, um, the the new series, the first book will be from the birth father's perspective, and uh, and I I'm just having so much fun writing it. Um, just his whole journey um, from getting his girlfriend pregnant to what happened after, um, and. Yeah, it's it's just been a fun book to write. It's going to be really emotional for people to read, um, mm. but I, I'm just I'm just enjoying writing it. And and when I started writing it, I hadn't met my birth father yet. Um, wow. And in the middle of writing it, I found my birth father and was able to meet him. So uh, so that's been kind of a interesting whole little side note to this journey that's amazing um when you found your birth father wow what was going through your mind what was the what was that first encounter like i don't know who was more nervous him or me Mm -hmm. um it was uh, yeah um But we just kind of looked at each other, and then he just swallowed me up in this giant hug, and I knew everything was going to be okay. So, oh, that is awesome. So, was he is he part of your um, consultant to your your book, your series, your new series? Uh, A little bit, but um, I didn't want to tell his story, I didn't think that was fair. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but uh, but I I did talk to him about it, but yeah. Um, but it, it was just an amazing gift mm-hmm. to be able to meet him. How, I, I was afraid it was too late. How long ago did you meet him? Uh, just a couple of months ago. Wow. This is brand, brand new, fresh. Wow. Yeah. And, and I can understand why you say could be too late because there's always life expectancy, right? The issue of, of where people yeah. are in their life journey. Wow, what yeah. a blessing to have um, been able to do that. Yeah. Congratulations, actually. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it was a wonderful gift. And it was a gift not just for me, but for him, because there were so many issues mm-hmm. surrounding my birth that he needed to come to terms with. I see. Yeah. So it, it was a gift all the way around. It's a healing, it, healing for everyone. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm so, I'm really happy for you. This is, it's tough, I'm sure. And in your your adoptive family were supportive. Yes, that's fantastic. All right. Well, so back to back to how we can, you know, your your news, your good news, your story um, about how you are sharing uh, your time and your effort to help with the homeless population. How can, because we're a video podcast and we're reaching out, how can others uh, come alongside? Um, How can they get involved? Especially the one that are still a little wary about, um, I don't know this population, I don't know what to do. What can we do? Again, it all goes back to being in your community Mm -hmm. and finding connections in your community. And I know right now, a lot of people feel like they're really disconnected from their community. A lot of people don't know their neighbors. A lot of people aren't sure they want to know their neighbors. Mm -hmm. Um, But there are so many ways to get connected locally in your community. And I encourage everyone just to start building those community connections Mm -hmm. and trying to find ways to work locally. Because that's that's how we need to fix this problem is starting in our neighborhoods and starting with our neighbors and then working out. That's right. Um, so what are some practical ways for people to do that? Because, you know, I don't even see my neighbors um, hardly ever. It's And I mean, Texas is so hot, so I can understand that. But um, people don't get out. So how would they connect with their neighbors or their community? 
Well, there's some there's some great apps that you could use to connect okay. without leaving your house if you want to start there. Because mm-hmm. again, this is about starting where you're comfortable, right? right? Yes. So yeah. So there are Facebook groups that are local to your community. There's uh, the Next Door app. Yes. That is local to your community. So start where you're comfortable and work from there. And both of those have groups that meet online and then they meet offline as well. And so you can start with things that Mm -hmm. are online and then work outwards. So start where you're comfortable and go from there. Perfect. So it's kind of like we got to meet each other where we're at, just like you, how you talked about, we have to meet the homeless community where they're at, um, where people are just not going to, um, uh, show up unless um, we're comfortable, right? So that's that's that will that's very helpful to uh, share. And what a great way to use the Facebook groups and pages and in next door to. I think you mentioned in our previous call before about finding things that connect us, not what divide us. So we can use those apps to um, find solutions versus complaining about the HOA, right? <laughs> Exactly. Yes, there are there are all kinds of events and things on both of those apps mm-hmm. and on other apps as well. But we don't utilize those to their full extent. Yes. Um, and we need to because there are great ways to connect with people mm-hmm. in your neighborhood on on all kinds of apps. Mm-hmm. But we don't. We choose to use those to complain. That's, uh, that's unfortunately most of the time. So. So we're, we're wrapping up with our conversation and I would just like to ask you, why would you like to come on podcasts or radio stations, wherever you are to share your story? Why would you like to do that? And what do you want to well, ultimately share with everyone? Well, I just, I just want to encourage everyone just, just to find what is their passion, mm-hmm. what they can use their voice for. Mm-hmm. And just go do it. Don't be afraid. And and if it's homelessness, great. If it's writing a book, great. I don't care. If it's if it's cleaning the neighborhood up, mm-hmm. I don't care what it is. Go figure out what their thing is and do it. We can all make the world a better place, but we won't do it if we don't try. And there are so many people that just never try. They're like, oh, I can't do that. But you can. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm living this every day now. And I'm trying to encourage more people to um, figure out what your passion is and go live it. And go live it and go do it. Don't just plan it and think about it, but just go do it. And and I think in, another encouraging thing is, um, you know, your your book, book platform didn't come the first year you started serving. So it could come later. So you just never know what doors will be open and and I think when you saw that you have this manuscript for your book you didn't just sit on it you did something with it so that is that is so awesome so how can how can our um, viewers find you our audience find you the best way is on my website Mm -hmm. leelincolnauthor.com that's l-e-i-g-h lincolnauthor.com yeah it's spelled funny I know (laughs) Very good. And your books are on Amazon. If people are interested, um, they can search you on your book on your by your author name. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And um, they're also available on my website. So okay, perfect. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us and just sharing your story. And it, like I said, it's multifaceted and you have a lot of good news and thank you for sharing your time and effort to serve the homeless community and inspiring us to know that we can too work and and help others and that um and then also another big one for me is that follow your passion and and follow your voice and let it take you um it may take you more than what you can ever imagine so thank you so much Thanks for having me. And that brings us to the end of another exciting episode of Hello World. Please support our podcast by hitting the subscribe button. 
Also, don't forget to smash that like. Your likes will help our podcast reach more awesome people like you. Lastly, tap that notification bell to receive instant alert whenever we drop in a new episode. We can't wait to see you again on our next episode. Until then, keep on being a positive force in this world.